WCW NWO Bash at the Beach 98 took place in San Diego, California on July 12th. We have around 10,000 fans in attendance for this one and a massive estimate of 525,000 viewers watching on pay-per-view. This event attracted a lot of people who normally wouldn't watch pro wrestling and that's because Card Malone and Dennis Rodman are competing in the main event, Malone and DDP vs Rodman and Hollywood Hogan. This past Monday on Nitro, Bill Goldberg won the World Heavyweight Championship, so the schedule Goldberg and Kevin Green vs Giant and Kurt Hennig match has been altered. Goldberg's now defending the world title against Hennig in a one-on-one -on -one match, and Kevin Green's also going to try to take down the Giant in a regular singles match. Let's see if WCW delivered in San Diego then. This is Bash at the Beach 1998. Raven and Saturn have been having some issues and those issues mainly played out on WCW Thunder. These two used to be friends, they aren't anymore. Saturn feels that Raven only cares about himself, so they're going to settle the score tonight at Bash at the Beach. The match begins on the outside and Raven takes some great guardrail bumps. Actually, he takes about 5 or 6 great guardrail bumps. When the two get in the ring, Saturn slips off the top turnbuckle, but his recovery was good. Even Mike Tanay pointed out how well Saturn saved himself right here. Saturn applies an ankle lock, but Raven makes it to the ropes. Perry then pulls off a gut wrench suplex and Bobby Heenan and points out that Saturn's not wearing his usual dirty jeans and dirty shirt. He's clearly distancing himself from Raven's flock. Perry misses a top rope leg drop and Raven capitalizes with a double underhook suplex. He then goes to set up a table but Saturn wakes up and Raven gets crotched on the top rope. Saturn's springboard clothesline fails to hit its target though. Raven then pulls off a Russian leg sweep into the guardrail and Saturn begins convulsing after the move. The two get in the ring and the crowd boos Raven as he raises his arms in the air in between booting his former best friend. Raven then locks in a sleeper hold but Saturn escapes after a jawbreaker. The flock's leader takes a few kicks in the corner, Saturn performs an exploder suplex, Perry then grabs a chair on the outside and Raven takes a shot before the chair gets rested on his face. Perry then pulls off a springboard leg drop that looked awesome but Raven kicks out of two and the match continues on. We see another great moment when Lodi and Riggs interfere and Saturn pulls off a double back suplex, but then things go from good to downright comical. Look at this, look at Nick Patrick selling this accidental kick to the face, this man should be on Broadway and not in a wrestling ring. His talents are wasted in WCW. But wait, there's more. Saturn sandwiches Raven in between two tables before going to the top rope. Canyon comes down and he saves Raven for some reason, but still, Saturn clearly sees Raven escape and he's like, oh well, guess I'll jump anyway, and he crashes on the stack tables. The timing here was horrible. Canyon raises Raven's arms in the air and then he hits him with a flatliner on the steel chair. So Canyon isn't siding with Raven it seems. The flock try to secure Raven a victory by throwing Perry back in the ring and pulling Raven over his opponent but Saturn kicks out. So Raven performs his signature steel chair drop to hold. Again, Saturn kicks out at two. Perry super kicks the chair into Raven's face. Scotty Riggs tries to save his leader but he ends up taking a death volley driver. The distraction allows Raven to perform the even flow and Raven wins via pinfall. Patrick selling in the table spot took me out of this one a bit, but besides those moments, this one wasn't too bad. Mean Gene Okerlund announces that Chavo Guerrero Jr. randomly challenged Stevie Ray to a match tonight even though Chavo already has a hair vs hair match scheduled with Uncle Eddie. Eddie says he was a little worried at first about this match tonight, but Uncle Eddie now knows that Chavo's completely lost his mind after challenging Stevie Ray. Eddie's job has now become a whole lot easier, and Eddie says he's gonna send an embarrassed Chavo Guerrero home tonight with a fully shaved head. Our next match is Kidman vs Juventud Guerrero, and check it out, his Kidman cleaned himself up? Has Billy Boy finally given up the smack? He sure is focused as he and Hoovy go at it in the ring. These two wrestled on Nitro not too long ago and their match was absolutely brilliant, so I'm hoping they can do the same here again at the pay per view. Kidman takes a few chops after Hoovy ducks a clothesline and Guerrero follows up with a flying head scissors. A clothesline sends Kidman to the outside, but this allows Lodi to pull Hoovy out at the opposite side of the ring for a beatdown. 
Kidman tries a plancha but he ends up taking out his flock teammates. This allows Hoovy to pull off a springboard splash that seriously impresses Bobby Heenan on commentary. But back in the ring, Kidman takes control with this hard hitting wheelbarrow suplex. So good. Kidman brings Guerrero to the outside and Billy pulls off an alley oop into the guardrail. Hoovy replies with a par bomb from the apron that Tony Schiavone calls a sidewalk slam. Not kidding, by the way. And back in the ring, Hoovy sets Kidman up for a top rope Hurricane Rana, but Billy counters with a punch to the balls and we see a sit down powerbomb. These two are just not letting up. The two duck a few clotheslines and Hoovy chops his opponent. Kidman then tries a body slam, but it gets countered with a roll up and Billy answers with a drop kick. Guerrero then gets kicked out of the ring, but Kidman can't follow up. The two fight it out at the top turnbuckles again, and this time Guerrero performs a diving Hurricane Rana while Kidman sat on the top rope. Guerrero then pulls off an effortless rebound Northern Lights suplex. He follows this up with a Sambo suplex, and the two get frustrated with each other when they try to cover, but both guys keep kicking out. Hoovy manages to land on his feet following a German suplex attempt, and he pulls off a Hoovy driver. He doesn't go for the 450 right away though, and this gives Kidman a chance to try the 7 year itch. Kidman misses, Hoovy ends up pulling off that 450, and Hooventud Guerrero wins a great match at Bash at the Beach. I prefer their Nitro encounter from a few weeks back though, this was good, but that Nitro match was even better. Still though, this Bash at the Beach match is worth a watch. Stevie Ray and Chavo Guerrero come out for their match and Chavo's definitely dressed for the occasion. Stevie Ray's all business but Chavo wants to have some fun tonight. I'm not exaggerating when I say Chavo Guerrero has been one of the recent highlights on WCW programming and still this new character has me thoroughly entertained. Eddie comes out holding a pair of scissors. He wants to get a close look at the beaten carcass Stevie Ray's gonna leave him with for the next match. Chavo meanwhile's having an absolute blast in the ring. He dedicates this up coming bout to Eddie, and just when you think he's oblivious to the pain he's about to suffer, it turns out that Chavo had a great plan. He offers Stevie a handshake, Stevie extends his hand, but then Chavo holds on and he acts like he's in pain from this vicious hand lock from hell and he tops out. Stevie Ray defeats Chavo Guerrero via submission and Stevie isn't sure what just happened. Chavo found an easy way out and now he's ready for Uncle Eddie. Chavo says he's exhausted but he guesses he has to wrestle Eddie now. Eddie shows his disdain to Stevie Ray although he won't do it to his face. And Charles Robinson demands that Eddie hands over the scissors before the match begins. We start off with Chavo biting his uncle's rear end and Eddie gets out of the ring. Eddie then wants Robinson to take a good look at the damage Chavo caused and Mr. Robinson doesn't want anything to do with it. Chavo performs this dance move right here that I tried to find the name of but I found around 10 different answers. The funky chicken, the shoot, the Chavo G pop, whatever it's called it annoys Eddie so much that he kicks the bottom turnbuckle and he hurts his knee. Chavo thinks that Eddie's dancing along with him and serious guys this is already match of the night for me, this can't be topped. The crowd applauds the shenanigans in the ring. Eddie grabs a chair but Chavo takes it away and he has a rest in the ring. Eddie wants a handshake, he even gets on his knees to show that he's being serious. Chavo ends up shaking his uncle's hand and then he takes him out with a clothesline. The crowd reactions to all of this have been absolutely on point. Eddie takes a back body drop, he then crawls to the referee for a little comfort. Chavo crawls over too and he bites Eddie's ass again, and fans are now on their feet cheering for Chavito. Eddie finally gets a chance to get physical after Robinson breaks a lockup in the corner. Eddie then pulls off a drop kick that literally makes Chavo's back bend completely out of shape, and Eddie keeps the pressure on with a brain buster followed by his vaulting senton. On the outside, Chavo gets thrown into the guardrails and Eddie begins feeling a lot more confident. In the ring, he pulls off the gory special. Chavo counters with an arm drag, but Eddie replies immediately with a clothesline. Eddie slows it down with a camel clutch, but Chavo gets back into it following a flying head scissors and a monkey flip. Eddie gets chopped in the corner and this leads to Chavito getting whipped into the opposite corner. Chavo goes for an aerial attack and even though he misses his target, he's still able to capture Eddie for a tilt-a-world backbreaker. 
Chavo loses control for a moment after getting dumped out of the ring. He regains it though when Uncle Eddie pulls up the protective mats and Chavo counters a suplex. Back in the ring, Chavo thinks it's going his way, but he gets a little overconfident and he gets crotched on the top turnbuckle. Eddie superplexes his nephew. The two then try to perform each other's finishers with Chavo failing the frog splash Eddie, but Eddie hitting a clean tornado DDT. Eddie then tries to cut Chavo's hair a little early and this leads to the referee stopping Eddie and Chavo eventually pulling off his own tornado DDT. Chavo, however, makes the same mistake as Eddie and he tries to cut his opponent's hair too early. Eddie catches Chavo out with a small package, Eddie Guerrero wins via pinfall, and so young Chavo's gonna get his hair cut in the middle of the ring. Eddie's got a pair of clippers, Charles Robinson sets up a chair, but Chavo ends up taking the clippers away from Eddie and he threatens to give his uncle a haircut. Chavo then just starts shaving his own head and Eddie gets a little freaked out again. So Uncle Eddie leaves the ring and Chavo continues to shave his head while blasting a super soaker in his mouth. Chavo doesn't seem embarrassed, as a matter of fact it looks like he's enjoying himself. And I for one enjoyed this match immensely. Chavo vs Eddie is probably the most underrated WCW storyline of 1998. some tissues at the ready. Here comes the Disco Inferno and Das Wunderkind. The boys are here at Bash at the Beach and they've got something to say. Disco says he and Alex are down with the Hispanic scene and they're learning the lingo. The Disco Inferno and Alex Wright are bounty bounty! Rowdy rowdy! Disco has no idea what any of this means, but he guesses it means the people want to see Alex and himself dance in the middle of the ring. Disco wants the guys in the production truck to play his music, but the NW Wolfpack theme plays instead and the faction make their way down to the ring, minus Sting. The Stinger must have had a day off. Disco Inferno vs Conan takes place next, but first Kevin Nash quotes Big Pun when he says the Wolfpack aren't players, they just crush a lot. Conan gets his usual promo in too, the crowd loves the Wolfpack. And here we go, the battle of K100. It's a short one unfortunately, Conan pulls off a nice Japanese arm drag and a drop toe hold before kicking the crap out of Disco. K-Dog goes for a sunset flip and he pulls it off after Disco gets distracted with some Disco dancing. We then see a face buster from Conan followed by the rolling clothesline. The cradle DDT gets countered though and Conan gets thrown out of the ring. Alex Wright attacks Conan but Alex made the mistake of turning his back on the wolf pack. Lex Luger comes along and he puts Alex in a torture rack while Kevin Nash jackknifes Disco. The referee is absolutely oblivious. K-Dog applies the tequila sunrise, the crowd goes crazy, it's a quick win for Conan at Bash at the Beach and yeah, it's obviously not a match you're gonna recommend for repeat viewings but for the audience in attendance, it worked. The San Diego crowd loved the red and black attack, they had fun laughing at Alex and Disco and to be honest, we needed a break after the pretty long Chavo vs Eddie match. Next up is the Kevin Green vs Giant match. Kevin randomly returned to WCW Nitro. He wanted a tag match, but as explained earlier, plans changed after Goldberg won the world belt on Nitro. You expect a slow one here with loads of time wasting, and that's pretty much what we got. Kevin infuriates the Giant by dodging the big man's attempts at locking up, and Giant even gets smacked across the face for being too slow, bozo. Giant chases Green around the ring. Kevin takes the opportunity to kick the top rope in the Giant's wee show, and Green just may have a chance here. He lands a few punches in the corner, but Jan pushes him away. Kevin tries this one too many times though, and he ends up getting caught out. Green gets slammed hard on the mat, the Jan then lands an elbow drop, and Kevin gets choked out when Jan stands on the bottom rope. The crowd chant Goldberg as Kevin gets his head smacked over and over again into the canvas, and Kevin's chances of winning this match are slowly diminishing as the giant lays in a few hard chops. Green does get a chance to drop Giant's neck over the top rope, but he takes a headbutt and the match goes to the outside. God, this isn't good at all, is it? Jan takes a few guardrail and ring post bumps. Kevin performs an admittedly sweet diving forearm from the top rope, but it isn't enough to win the match. 
Green sets Giant in the corner for a three point stance tackle, the Giant grabs his neck, we see the choke slam, and that's it over. I said before that I do quite enjoy Kevin Green in WCW and I'm not sure why, but this wasn't good and it's easily the worst match of the night so far. Dean Malenko was supposed to face Chris Jericho tonight for the cruiserweight belt. However, Dean was warned by JJ Dillon not to attack Chris before the match or there'd be suspensions. Jericho managed to bait Malenko in and Dean beat the crap out of Chris on Nitro, so Malenko got arrested, and even worse, he got his title match taken away at Bash at the Beach. Chris comes down to the ring and instead of wrestling tonight, he's gonna give the fans a little soft shoe routine. I mean, I think that's a fair trade off, you know? But James J. Bebe Dillon doesn't think so. I like how JJ just magically appeared in the ring just as Jericho was about to begin his dance routine. Dylan thinks he could be wrong about Jericho, he's surprised by how many fans Chris really has, and maybe all these fans wanted to see their hero wrestle tonight and defend that belt. Chris says there's what the fuck is that? Is that Bret Hart? Hard Stern? Anyway, Jericho says Dean isn't here and it's not his fault that there's no match tonight, but Dylan's only gone and got some local guy to wrestle Chris. It's some jabroni who hasn't wrestled in 6 months apparently. Jericho's eager to teach this random jobber a lesson so he agrees to put his title on the line in a no DQ match because Jericho equals buy rate. Dylan points to the entranceway and Rey Mysterio's music plays in the arena. Rey's in excellent shape, he hasn't been slacking off during his downtime, and he starts it off by wailing Jericho in the corner before hitting a back body drop and a drop kick. Man, it's good to see Rey back in WCW. He tries an ambitious head scissors while holding onto the ring post and you gotta give this one a pass. Back in the ring though, Jericho targets the knee as expected, he gets in a few shots and Mysterio goes down, but when Rey fights back, Jericho decides it's it's time to leave. The two end up on the entranceway and Jericho ends up getting thrown off the lifeguard chair. Ray then climbs up and he performs a diving hurricane runner and Jericho then gets a handful of sand in the eyes. Back in the ring, Jericho rolls through after a crossbody. He then sets Ray up for a par slam from the top rope. That's right, a top rope par slam. Jericho then grabs a chair and he smashes it over Ray's knee. He then closes the chair around Ray's knee, but Chris wastes way too much time and Mysterio dodges the attack. This leads to Mysterio taking the chair and Chris takes a few shots and the chair gets drop kicked into the champ's right knee. Mysterio then performs a pop up face buster, his springboard hurricane rana attempt doesn't look too good though and Jericho tries to counter with a lion tamer. Mysterio makes it to the ropes, the match continues on but then the crowd pops as Dean Malenko begins making his way to the ring. Nice shirt Dean, that's gonna be a hot seller for sure. Back in the ring, Jericho tries to apply the Lion Tamer again, but it gets countered and just like that we have a new cruiserweight champion. Rey Mysterio wins his return match at Bash at the Beach. Dean chases Jericho to the backstage area and the enforcer Arn Anderson stops the former champ so Dean can launch an attack. Is Double A now working alongside Dean Malenko? That's interesting. Rey Mysterio celebrates in the ring. The match wasn't bad, but you could definitely tell Mysterio was a little rusty. No doubt he'll be back on form in no time at all. Bret Hart vs Booker T is our next match. Bret targeted Booker on Nitro two weeks ago and Booker requested this matchup while promising to give the hitman a TV title shot. Honestly, Bret didn't seem to care too much about the championship. Stevie Ray's been giving Booker a hard time recently and Stevie wanted Booker to take care of Bret the old Harlem Heat way, but Booker wanted to do it in the ring and so here we are. Bret takes a look at the TV title and judging by Bret's facial expression, he really couldn't care less about that championship. Kinda diminishes it in my opinion because TV title matches have absolutely destroyed world title matches in 97 and 98, but I digress. Booker shoves Bret and Bret says so much for being Mr. Nice Guy to the cameras. Booker strikes first with an arm drag takeover, he then takes Bret down to the mat and as much as I like Booker T, he's not winning a grappling contest against his excellency. Bret Bret lands a back elbow and a few shots to the head, Booker replies with his running forearm, Booker then goes for the hook kick and uh, yeah that didn't look too good did it? As good as seeing two great performers work together for the first time, things like this can always happen because they just don't know each other well enough. 
Two hip toss counters lead to Brett getting thrown out of the ring, but it's Bret Hart who takes control on the outside. Brett punishes Booker before bringing it back in the ring, and Brett stays in charge with a back elbow and his headbutt to the midsection. Booker replies to all this with a spine buster, but Brett kicks out of the cover, so the hitman sends Booker back to the outside for more guardrail bumps. Booker also gets his back rammed into the ring post, and when the match resumes inside the ropes, the hitman performs a backbreaker. We see the elbow drop from Brett's rope, but Booker stays in it. There's the Russian leg sweep, and Brett tells the audience to cheer for their TV champ who's currently laid out in the middle of the ring. Something I've noticed here is that this match is all out of sync when you consider how Brett usually wrestles. I've watched my fair share of Hitman matches, and you always know his lead-ins and his setups, but this time it's all over the place. The same though can be said for Booker. Booker pulled off his running forearm and spine buster really early in this one, and I'm honestly curious about where they go from here. It's not a bad thing, I'm just not sure what they're trying to build towards. Booker takes some more punishment and he must be in a bad way because his usually smooth corner sunset flip gets messed up pretty badly. He makes up for it though with an excellent spinning back kick and the hitman then takes an axe kick. Booker then performs a flapjack, we see the spinner Rooney, and Booker looks to end it with a missile drop kick. Booker pulls it off, he covers Brett, and Brett gets a foot on the ropes. The match then ends abruptly when Brett hits Booker with a chair, Booker flies over the top rope, Brett smacks him, and the referee calls for a disqualification. I can't begin to measure how disappointed I feel right now. I knew something was up as explained earlier, but yeah, a, a DQ sucks. If you need the real explanation here, Booker T needed to take time off, and that's why Brett continues to hit Booker with the chair following the match. The TV champ was going to be away from the ring for a little while, so WCW wanted to ride him off with this beatdown from the hitman, but they definitely played with our expectations here. Brett locks in the figure four around the ring post, and the commentators wonder where Stevie Ray is. Stevie eventually appears, and he slowly walks towards Brett, forcing the hitman to let go of the hold and make his way back up the entranceway. Booker clearly needs medical assistance, but Stevie Ray refuses on behalf of his younger brother. Stevie makes Booker walk to the back instead of getting stretchered out, and you get the feeling that Stevie's thinking to himself, yeah, you should have handled this the old Harlem Heat way. It's time for the world title match, a match that was only made official days ago on WCW Thunder. Champion Goldberg vs Challenger Kurt Hennig Goldberg shocked the world when he became WCW Champion in the Georgia Dome this past Monday, but now it's time to defend the belt while maintaining an undefeated streak. Will WCW just give Goldberg one minute squash matches while holding the world championship? Well, no, not all the time, and that may cause a problem, but let's do what WCW are doing right now and worry about that at a later date. Goldberg's just became the world champion, so let's give him a break. For now. Hennig's back from an injury tonight, but the crowd doesn't care. He sells a shoulder block like Goldberg's made of solid steel, and Kurt then walks right into a hip toss. Kurt doesn't look too amused, he tries laying in a few chops, but they have no effect. The world champ pulls off a rolling leg scissors, and Hennig ends up on the outside. Goldberg brings him back in, and Kurt takes a forearm to the face. Kurt then gets a boot up in the corner, but he then makes the mistake of going to the top rope. Goldberg grabs Kurt, and he performs his military press par slam. Henny gets the opportunity to work over Goldberg's knee, but that doesn't last too long. Bobby Heenan says Kurt definitely has the ability to beat the world champion tonight, but I don't think anyone really thought Kurt had a hope in hell. Goldberg goes down after a clothesline that makes no contact whatsoever. Kurt performs the perfect plex, but Goldberg kicks out at two, and this leads us into the finish. Goldberg takes Kurt down with a clothesline, he then performs a spear, he gets the 1 2 3 with a jackhammer, and Mike Tanay says this victory means Goldberg's now at 112 0. So, on WCW Worldwide on July 7th, Goldberg defeated John Nord, a match that was taped all the way back in April. He then wrestled Scott Hall at the WCW Saturday Night Tapings on July 7th, but this match wasn't televised. At Thunder, he wrestled Scott again, but again, this match didn't make the air. And then he defeated Kurt Hennig at the WCW LA Melee live event on July 10th. This victory at Bash at the Beach actually means Goldberg is at 113 wins in all. So once again, WCW undersold themselves with how many matches Goldberg's had. This match wasn't good, by the way. There needs to be a bit more thought put into Goldberg's title defenses because the squash matches can't continue forever. Main event time, Diamond Dallas Page and Karl Malone vs Hollywood Hogan and Dennis Rodman. 
Dallas and Carl Malone developed a friendship when Page attended a jazz game earlier in the year. In seeing as Rodman was already tight with Hulk Hogan, WCW got a great opportunity to lift the NBA Finals and put it into the wrestling ring. Celebrities in pro wrestling can get scoffed at sometimes and even a lot of the boys backstage didn't like celebrities coming in and taking away precious TV time, particularly during main events. But the numbers don't lie. Bash at the Beach 1998 is WCW's most financially successful pay-per-view of the year and the company's most watched pay-per-view of the year. It's only behind Starcade 97 in terms of greatest buy rate of all time, so Carl Malone and Dennis Rodman did bring in a whole lot of new viewers. Whether the those new viewers would stick around after Bash at the Beach remains to be seen. Needless to say, it's a pretty big deal tonight for WCW, but it's not a big deal for Dennis Rodman. Dennis decided to party hard the night before and he arrived at the pay-per-view in quite the state, according to practically everyone who was there that night. He was very tired and very unmotivated. But I guess it wasn't much of a concern for Bischoff and company, seeing as viewers had already bought the show and Dennis wasn't going to hang around much afterwards. There's even a moment after the entrances where Hogan gives Rodman this look as if to say, brother, are you serious right now? The competitors get in the ring, there's some discussion in regards to who's going to start the match off, and it looks like we're going to see Carl Malone and Dennis Rodman in the ring at the opening bell. We get a lot of time wasting as Malone tries to lock up with Rodman and Rodman keeps running away. A test of strength doesn't happen either as the crowd anxiously awaits some physicality between these two. Rodman applies a side headlock but he gets out of the ring when Malone throws him into the ropes and Hollywood Hogan has to go out to give his boy a little encouragement. Dennis decides these people are going to have to wait it out and he tags in Hollywood. The two flex a little before circling the ring and they stall even more when going for another test of strength. Malone's able to apply a standing shoulder lock and Hogan ends up taking a body slam that gets the crowd all fired up. This leads to DDP getting tagged in and Rodzilla has to get in there to earn that paycheck, brother. DDP shoves Dennis and Hogan complains that Paige pulled Rodman's bandana. I mean, if it's that much of a problem, then take it off. DDP then shoves Rodman again and Dennis falls to the mat with no grace whatsoever and again the NWO guys say that DDP isn't fighting fair. Charles Robinson thinks otherwise. Dallas and Rodman then spit on each other before locking up and Rodman performs an arm drag. This got a way bigger pop at last year's Bash at the Beach but still, old Rodzilla could pull these off quite well. The crowd are now chanting boring and it's all thanks to the stalling and the time wasting. This match is just over the halfway point now and, well, we've seen better, haven't we? DDP applies a side headlock and he collides into Rodman with a lot of force. It looks like there may have been some miscommunication here but Rodzilla gets wiped out and the miscommunication continues during the next spot. I'm not sure what happened here but it looks like DDP wanted to push Rodman into the ropes and Dennis just fell over. Dennis looks absolutely wrecked during a DDP chin lock. There's some hope for Dennis when he performs two leapfrogs, but then he just, I don't know, he forgets what he's supposed to do and again he collides in the page and both men fall down. You kind of feel sorry for Dallas here to be honest. Hogan and Malone take over and we get a long top wrist lock from Hollywood. Malone breaks it and Rodman attacks from behind and this allows Hogan to do some basic stuff with Carl, punches, choke holds, that kind of thing. Malone does take a body slam though and Dennis Rodman gets tagged in when Carl's down and out. Super creep Malone gets thrown into Hogan's boot, Hollywood comes back in for some very basic offense and check this out, Rodman holds Malone up for a free shot yet Dennis also falls on his ass after Hogan punches Carl. This match is an absolute train wreck and I'm sorry but it's all because of Dennis Rodman. You don't expect great things but you certainly don't expect it to be this bad. Carl takes a back suplex from Hollywood but after dodging an elbow drop he's able to tag in DDP. Page knows this is going downhill so he tries to excite fans with a clothesline from the top rope before firing up and bringing the speed of the match up a little. Unfortunately, this stops way too soon when Rodman knees Page from the apron and Dallas goes down. Hogan then whips DDP with his belt, Page takes a double clothesline from Dennis and Hulk and a double big boot and now it's all about DDP getting back to his corner and tagging in Malone. Both Hogan and Rodman do a little work, Rodman applies a front chancery twice, Hogan's able to hit Dallas with a big boot and he signals for the end but he ends up missing the leg drop and Carl Malone comes in. Hogan takes two clotheslines and the crowd pops for Malone clotheslining Rodman. They cheer again when Dennis takes a body slam because, you know, this is what people paid to see and they really haven't seen it yet. 
Pallone signals for the diamond cutter, so he tags in DDP and Dolls performs his finisher on Hulk. Rodman then tries to break the cover, but Malone hits Dennis with a cutter. The referee gets distracted though and the booty man runs in to hit Paige with a stunner or a chart buster or apocalypse whatever. Hogan covers DDP, the NWO win the match, so Malone hits the disciple with a diamond cutter and that's it. That's the end of this absolutely brutal main event. Malone and DDP celebrate like they just won, the black and white NWO come out to congratulate Hogan and Rodzilla and it's just a really deflating end to Bash at the Beach 1998. Eddie Guerrero vs Chavo Guerrero was a lot of fun, Kidman vs Hoovy was good but they've had a better TV match, Raven vs Saturn was ok as was Jericho vs Mysterio, Conan vs Disco was what it needed to be thankfully, the rest I think can be summed up with one word, disappointing. Bret vs Booker could have been a show stealer but WCW had other plans for how that one would play out. Goldberg vs Hennig was a standard Goldberg TV match that had nothing going for it really, and I'd say those fans who complain about celebrities in wrestling would be absolutely justified after watching Kevin Green vs The Giant and the main event tag match. The whole pay per view is one of WCW's weaker offerings for 1998, and when you consider how many new eyeballs they had on them this night, you would have thought the company would try to be more careful in terms of putting on a series of great matches, but they didn't do that here, they kinda blew it. Watch it for Chavo vs Eddie and enjoy some of the other undercard contests, but you can skip the last 60 minutes and not miss a whole lot. Thanks for watching though guys, I'll see you on Thursday for Reliving the War where we'll find out what's next for Goldberg and the NWO. I hope you enjoyed this one though, and again thank you for watching, take care.